I uh, I have to note that liberals tell you that, well, all cultures are equal except ours. Ours is bad, 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 because, you know, back in the day, those old angry uh, white European men, they said that uh, black people were only three-fifths of uh, human beings. Except, of course, at the time, that compromise, as it was called, for those of you who don't know your history, it was the first time that anybody anywhere in the world had even acknowledged that somebody who was a slave actually was human, at least a percentage human. We were getting there. The rest of the world that the liberals so admire is, well, in China. Liberals are in this, angry about this in this country. The New York Times is frothing at the mouth about it. In China, a college basketball team, women's college basketball team, came on the court and they were parading a sign uh, that was uh, against gay pride flags, and it said they didn't want to import the worst aspects of the American West into their country, including homosexuality. So American liberals now are saying, well, the Chinese better learn that that's not being inclusive. Why don't you go over to Tiananmen Square and start a riot, and maybe then... You can convince the Chinese government to change its ways. But remember, their culture is better than ours. 835, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 38. I wanted to mention our friends this morning at Waddell and Reed, right here in Twin Falls. It's an investment firm that's been doing this since 1937. Do the math, eight decades. One of the oldest firms in the country that offers mutual funds. Waddell and Reed owns and manages two mutual fund families. Investing by a conservative nature. Do they know what they're doing? Once again, been in business 80 years? I think that answers the question. What they'll do is they'll work with you individually, knowing that you have different needs and goals than perhaps the next person who will be walking into the office. They'll help you build proper expectations. Waddell and Reed will help you manage money. And at Waddell and Reed, they take planning personally. Telephone number for reaching our show today, 736-0300, 736-0300. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on Top Story. Talk about liberal media, Bill. Yesterday, that big watt radio station in Boise, the afternoon show, had a four-hour pro-drug program on about marijuana. Absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Made me sick. I mean, all the hard work our law enforcement, drug counselors, uh, probation officers do to try to keep drugs away from kids, and this idiot puts on a four-hour pro-marijuana program. That, that explains. I had a message yesterday from a friend of mine. She lives in uh, northern Idaho, and uh, she was apparently listening to the show. Now I know what she was complaining about because she's the founder of the website Right Wing News, which has, I think, 18 million subscribers. She's pretty sharp. She's a good entrepreneur. She used to work with Sal Russo, who used to be an aide to then-Governor Ronald Reagan way back in the day. But she sent me a message yesterday, and she says, boy, I wish you were up here because it would be much better than what I'm hearing today. Now I know what she was talking about. Well, you're doing a good job. I appreciate your work, and it's a good show, Bill. Hey, thank you much for the call. It's 837. We're at 39. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, this, this situation that we're dealing with, with the left trying to look at the sky and tell you that the sky isn't blue, that the sky is, in fact, uh, purple or green or whatever they want to call it on any particular day, when you know better. They read their George Orwell. It's not just the Alinsky. They read their George Orwell, and they know if they keep repeating something long enough, just like mainstream media will, will actually influence your views on this world. And media has become a cheerleader for a lot of these issues. Americans used to think that People who had certain lifestyles, we weren't nasty or mean to them, but we thought perhaps that they were insane. You can't say that any longer today. There's a writer at Crisis this morning, which is a, which is a conservative Catholic publication, and he mentions he, he's the man in charge of a pro-family group. And he was giving a speech to some students at a, at a university, a Catholic university in this country, when the students were Googling him while he was there, they were in the, sitting on their laptops in the classroom Googling him, and they told him, oh, the Southern Poverty Law Center says that your organization is a hate group. Why do they call his organization a hate group? Because they quote their church in talking about the homosexual lifestyle as being objectively disordered. Now, the SPLC, Southern Poverty Law Center, doesn't attack the Roman Catholic Church. It's too big a target right now, 
right now being the operative words there. So they attack this guy's group. Even though I remember a, a fellow arguing with me on a radio show years ago, and I, I told him, I said, I learned a lot of my Bible from my grandmother, my grandmother Kali, and she told me uh, that, that God believed that was an, uh, you know, an abomination against the Lord. God said it, then you've got to believe it, right? Well, I mentioned this on the air, and a few days later, some woman called me up, some liberal, and said, well, why would anybody want to listen to you because you say their lifestyle is an abomination? I said, well, my grandmother told me that, and she was quoting the Bible, the Word of God. Again, but you're not attacking that, are you? You're attacking someone who shares what's there. Well, it's, it's, that book has informed Western civilization now for thousands of years. Maybe perhaps we could at least acknowledge it's there. But liberals don't want that. On the other hand, they want to bring all the Mohammedans here and seem to believe somehow that will make things better. 20 minutes from 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. It's 37. And uh, the violent liberals are planning a big party in Berkeley, California in a few days. I'll share that in a few minutes. Also, gun talk coming up in the next hour of the show with Todd Eccles. I joked the other day that I saw a really desirable piece of property. I was, uh, Easter morning, I went for a drive, and I drove down, well, what's North Grandview toward the canyon to get a couple of pictures out over the canyon. It was one of our rare sunny days lately, and I drove out there, and I passed a lot that's for sale. It's not right on the canyon, but you'd still get some great views from there, especially out of the second floor. And I thought, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to build a house on this spot. And if I was going to do that, I would be giving a, a holler to the folks at Western Visions, Inc. And I've been telling you for months that Western Visions, Inc., they do some marvelous work when it comes to, uh, to restorations of a lot of very historic properties. They'll do these renovations, and the work is done by fine craftsmen. And I've also told you, they consult with you not only from the first day, but every day through the building project or the renovation project. But if you're looking to build a home from the ground up, they'll also do that for you. Russell Smith, the founder of Western Visions, he has, well, he's got well over 20 years building homes and renovating homes. And if you'd like to know more, I'd like you to check out his website. That's western-visions.com. You can see some of the work there, too. I've, I, I've toured one of the homes, and let me tell you, uh, it is impressive to see what, what they do and how they do it. Again, that's western-visions.com. Coming up on 843, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 38. Did you know Bernie Sanders is campaigning? Oh, there was a story in the Washington Post yesterday. Bernie Sanders is infuriating leading Democrats. A.B. Stoddard wrote at Real Clear Politics today that Sanders at the moment, I, I was shocked by this too, but he's the most popular politician in America. Maybe not because he's a crazy wacko socialist, but because he's honest. I mean, he is, and he's not even what you'd call friendly, but he's, he's honest. <laughs> but he's infuriated some Democrats. He refused to get behind John Ossoff in the special election in Georgia. Apparently there's something about Ossoff that he knows that he doesn't like. Um, and apparently a lot of voters there will learn about that. They'll learn more about the guy before the special runoff election that's coming up. Sanders was questioned about this, and he said, well, I'm not a Democrat. <laughs> he's, he is an independent. Uh, technically, he's, he's listed as an independent. <laughs> and then he's now campaigning with a pro-life candidate in Nebraska, and Democrats... At least the, the ones in Washington at the DNC aren't pleased by what he's doing. How dare he go out and, and campaign with somebody? This, the candidate he's campaigning with is a Democrat, but he sponsored a bill in the legislature, which is unicameral legislature in Nebraska. That means they only have one house. But he sponsored a bill there a couple of years ago where he said before a woman should, uh, should choose an abortion, she should have to look at the ultrasound. Oh, liberals are just beside themselves that anyone in their ranks, these are the same people who objected to some killer being executed in Arkansas last night, but who feel it's part of sacrament of their, their political party to kill little babies in their mommy's wombs. <laughs> they cannot, they don't want Bob Casey in their party. Remember, he was, uh, he was uh, pro-life. Anybody who 
They wouldn't today want John F. Kennedy, who was pro-life. They wouldn't want him at the party, for crying out loud. This is the thing about them. They'll talk a good game about some of their past political heroes, but they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't vote for them today. So they're angry with Sanders because he's campaigning. And, and I have to note, when I lived in Vermont, and Bernie, before he was in the Senate, he was in the House, and he was my, my representative at the time, uh, Bernie uh, was pro-gun. And that also doesn't settle well with a lot of what you'd call the Hollywood elite or the Manhattan elite that think they control that party. And Sanders has been saying, oh, you're missing the point, which is that there are a great many people in flyover country and they don't believe in a lot of that same crap. Just like what we were talking about a few minutes ago. Some of these social issues, we've been beat over the head and said, well, you've got to accept them. And now they say, well, poll show, most Americans don't think. No, they're just afraid to talk about their opposition and, 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 and so a guy like Donald Trump comes along and they say, I'll go with him. And Sanders says there's a good reason people went with him. Hillary Clinton, according to A.B. Stoddard, was spying on her own staff, Ms. Paranoia, way back in 2008 because she couldn't believe that she could legitimately lose to Barack Obama in primaries. So she believed somebody inside her campaign was sabotaging it. So she was scouring all the emails of her staff. In other words... It couldn't be that the American people rejected me. I'm so handsome and I'm so clever and it had to be the Russians or the Martians or somebody sabotaged me from within. It's 847. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 39. The, the, the liberals on the coasts have completely lost all what you might call objectivity. Well, they don't, they, they've had a serious break with reality. You had heard the story, I'm sure, that Berkeley, California, canceled a speech by Ann Coulter, who is sometimes a conservative, more of a populist than a conservative, because the campus said, well, the, the college uh, Republicans and the like didn't tell us in advance that she was coming. Uh, we can't guarantee her safety. I know how this goes. Ann was on one of my radio shows years ago, and she was telling me off air that uh, the number of death threats she gets are stratospheric, uh, you know, that's just incredible amount of these things. You could pile them up high and into the atmosphere. And I went to hear a speech that she gave. She, was, she came to our local community to give a speech at a local university. Two weeks before, she had been in Connecticut, and someone threw a pie in her face. And while she was giving a speech, some guy got up because Anne does not promote. Now, she's not. Some of her friends happen to be homosexuals. So she's not going around beating them over the head with baseball bats. But she just doesn't believe, again, she's not, she's not saying, look, I don't have to join in, and I don't believe that this is right, which is perfectly fine. So some kid in Connecticut stood up and said, well, what would you do if you had a son and he was gay? Without missing a beat, she said, did you know that you were adopted? So by the time two weeks later she got to our location to give a speech, these people were angry. There was a guy running around in the audience wearing a dress. He had a full beard. He had a dress on and a wig and kept interrupting her and screaming at her. Other guys would jump up and tell her they wanted to do all sorts of salacious things to her. She kept her calm. She'd pause. Then she'd speak again. They had to have deputies ringing the room. They had to bring in the hired security. I knew most of these guys. They were off-duty sheriff's deputies. We were a group of us supposed to go with, uh, to her with dinner afterward, but the death threats were so bad that they had to whisk her away to the airport and get her out of town after the speech. So she is out there on the edge, and people will say, well, she's just being a provocateur to make money. She's putting her life on the line, folks. Meanwhile, Berkeley has since relented because people pointed out, how can you stop someone, a free American, from coming to a publicly funded university and giving a speech? But Berkeley says, well, if she's going to do it, she'll have to do it on a different day and in a different location. This was Coulter's response last night on Sean Hannity's program on the Fox News Channel. I think that Berkeley just want, for one thing, they are so completely insulated. Um, obviously, they were st stung by all these lefties around the country saying, well, no, even though you're a university campus and you seem to have abandoned all constitutional rights or concept of free speech, you have to let, you have to let people speak. You can't discriminate them against them on the basis of viewpoint. No, you cannot impose arbitrary um, and harassing restrictions on the exercise of a constitutional right. I don't happen to be available on May 2nd. Um, moreover, there are
are a lot of great reporters in San Francisco. I think they might want to ask Janet Napolitano this. Is she willing to have, even if this were possible, um, to pay the hundreds of thousands of dollars in rescheduled, rebooked hotel rooms, flights for me, my security, my guests? Um, was Vincenti Fox required to reschedule randomly? Um, when they canceled originally, they said they'd reschedule for September. Now it's just they just pick another date out of the out of the hat. None of this has to do with security. Um, after acceding to all of their requirements, which were also arbitrary and silly, and they claimed it was on the basis of safety. A reference to Janet Napolitano, former Homeland Security Director and handsome woman herself. Uh, is a reference to the fact that Napolitano is now running that university, uh, which makes sense, right? Fellow traveler and the fellow travelers at Berkeley want one of their own, and they don't want dissenting voices any longer. The notion that someone might come along and say something that is hurtful to your ears, uh, you've got to close off all other views. How is that in any way going to help you come up with a better understanding of the world around you? I referenced that Pat Buchanan column today where Buchanan says people will go off into these little groups any longer, and, and Eric Erickson saying the same thing. Erickson brought it up today. He said, all the liberals who are dancing over Bill O'Reilly's media grave uh, are okay or were okay with Bill Clinton doing things that were worse. Do you know O'Reilly wasn't walking around the hallways groping women? We talked about it yesterday. He'd make blonde jokes. People seem to think that, well, that means O'Reilly was pinning women up against the wall and rubbing them. No, nothing like that happened. It's clearly... Compared to what Bill Clinton was doing in the Oval Office, clearly, clearly, and what he did as governor of Arkansas, clearly, doesn't even rise to a tenth of that. But for you, you liberals out there, and, and he's not even a conservative, you liberals out there think you've scored a big victory. How? Are you going to get more votes? According to 538 blog, which is not a conservative publication, it looks as if Republicans are going to, despite what the New York Times may tell you or MSDNC may tell you or the Alphabet Networks, it looks like Republicans are going to have a banner year next year in the midterm elections. Camille Paglia, uh, she's a lesbian. She admits she voted for Jill Stein. She wouldn't vote for the Clintons because she said Bill Clinton is a pig. She was at a, at a campus giving a speech uh, on part of a panel, and I saw it this morning at Real Clear Politics. She said Donald Trump is going to get reelected. Because Democrats have overplayed their hand. All of the people running around uh, in these uh, costumes that look like sexual organs in the streets in Washington or smashing windows and setting fires at Berkeley, they're not somehow, oh, gee, if I just go out there and we burn the campus down, then middle America will get behind us. You <laughs> dinglings. Do you know anything about marketing whatsoever? You're not winning any converts. You're turning people off. You're showing what you truly are. And that is, is that liberalism is a, we talked earlier about certain viruses that get introduced into our culture. Well, there's one for you right now. It's 854. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 40 right now. I wanted to mention too, as well, our friends at Mount Harrison Audiology. Got a lot of friends this morning I want to mention. Dr. Christine Pickup has been in business for 17 years, serving the hearing impaired of all ages. Which is why, if you're wondering, why would I pick Mount Harrison Audiology over one of these big corporate hearing centers? It's her experience. The true diagnostic testing, she reminds you, will help you know what the causes of your hearing loss are and will lead to the best treatment options. Trust your hearing to a certified audiologist. Call Mount Harrison Audiology today. You can make an appointment at 208 312 0957. That's 312 0957. It's just. We're, we're dealing with people out there who are having an inability because they thought that they had conquered and triumphed. And now they're realizing nobody liked them in the first place. <laughs> and Valerie Jarrett, speaking on MSDNC, was asked by Mika Brzezinski, Mika Brzezinski's father, the man who lost the to the man Mullis. Uh, Jarrett says that uh, election night was completely unexpected this past November. Well, it was, I think, gut-wrenching is how I described it. Uh, so, but 
that's our democracy. And then you have to just move on and figure out how you want to continue to do uh, what you care most about. And for me, it's issues like gender equality and criminal justice reform and helping advocate for civil rights and getting young people interested in, in uh, picking up that baton. So there's still a lot of important work left to do. How about putting Americans back to work? Oh, no, we have to talk about social justice and gender equality. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Americans today, children today, do not have the same opportunities they had 50, 60 years ago. You got it? And, in fact, their opportunities have been drying up. And you're sitting here saying, oh, we need to have more people uh, using, uh, more grown men using little girls' locker rooms, and then everything in America will be wonderful, and the sun will come up, and we'll call it a welcoming country. <laughs> Nobody will be working, but on the other hand, we'll call it a welcoming country. They don't get it. Speaking of the Iranian connection, if you didn't know, Valerie Jarrett is Iranian. Um, so I guess she gets on well with uh, Mika Brzezinski because M Mika Brzezinski's father managed to turn that country over to the Mad Mullahs. We're coming up on a short break in a couple of minutes. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Before we end this hour, just a quick warning. Because sometimes, indeed, there is fake news out there. I saw this this morning. I was getting ready for work. You sometimes, if you're looking at Facebook, some of you who actually use it, will see paid sponsorship. In, in other words, it's not somebody's friend who posted something or you, you who posted something, but it'll be a sponsored post. That is, somebody is paying it for advertising. And there was a post this morning at Facebook. Uh, that said, tell Mike Crapo, and it was one, of, and it says conservatives are opposed to this bill too. And you had somebody who was supposedly a conservative offering all of this evidence, and then there was a series of comments. And remember, Mike Crapo has the highest ranking in the U.S. Senate from the American Conservative Union. But you had all of these people then who were posting on this, saying, "Oh well, we need to get rid of Crapo, whether they be liberals or conservative Republicans." We need to get rid of Mike Crapo, and we'll show him at election time. First of all, I keep hearing that. We'll show them at election time, and then nothing changes. I don't think they take your threats too seriously. But the thing is, this sponsored content was developed, and it's propaganda coming from the left. But it's designed to look as if somehow conservatives would like to get rid of Mike Crapo and are opposed to him on this particular, particular air quality issue. Be very wary of what you see out there. Be very wary of it. This is a fishing expedition trying to convince Republicans that he is, uh, he is, uh, he is not worthy of your vote the next time he's up. It's a, it's a ways off yet, but the next time he's up for re-election. But I'm telling you, you've got to look at everything today. Uh, there's an old line one of my buddies from high school, Dwayne Glover, used to tell me, and he shared it from his grandfather. Uh, don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. Now, that might sound a little extreme, but you get the point. We've got one more hour ahead. Bill Colley with you today on Top Story. Going to be talking firearms in the next hour as we approach 9 o'clock in news from Fox News Radio.